Okay, let's get into our discussion about horizontal curves. Now, horizontal curves, um, when you're designing roads and roadways and streets, um, these curves are usually modeled um, after a circle, after arcs, after arcs of a circle. We don't want these weird looking curves because they may be too difficult to design. Um, and these horizontal curves, the purpose of these horizontal curves are to connect other types of roads, whether they, they're straight roads or they're curved roads, together. And these curves really, they provide a smooth transition between one road and another road. So when you're changing directions on the road or the street, um, you have these nice, smooth curves that allow you to, you know, remain at your, at your uh, speed, whatever you're going at, um, throughout the curve and into your exiting road, okay? Um, I just want to begin, let's, let's just start um, identifying the different parts of horizontal curves. Um, and uh, we'll go over some definitions and hopefully derive at least two equations um, to help us figure out uh, how we can determine, you know, the length of the curve or the length of the long chord um, of the curve. So let's 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 say we have this blue smooth curve, okay? It started here and it ended here. I'm going to call this L. L stands for the length of this smooth blue curve. Now, if if this is where the curve started, and this is where the curve ended, we can actually draw lines that are tangent to that point. Because really, this is just part of a circle. This is just an arc, a part of a circle. That should be a nice, perfect circle. I don't know why it looks like that. But we can actually draw... Let me see if I can draw this, draw this nicely with a ruler. If we drew tangents to here. We drew another tangent here. Okay. These two tangent lines to this curve, to where this curve starts, where this curve ends. So your direction of travel, you know, would be this way. You're going along this curve and you're going this way. This is the start of the curve, this is the end of the curve. And these two tangent lines um, I'm sorry, where the curve starts, let's label that BC. And where the curve ends, let's label it EC. Now, BC, all that stands for is the beginning of curve, where the curve starts. EC stands for end of curve, where the curve ends. And these two lines are tangent to those two points, okay? Now, the point where these two tangents intersect, okay, above the curve. And remember, these are horizontal curves, so you're a bird, you're looking down, and you see this curve, okay? Horizontal curves. This is called the PI. PI stands for point of intersection. It's the point of intersection of these two tangents, okay? Now, if we were to draw... Well, let's, let's define these two distances first. From the BC to the point of intersection, this distance right here, this distance right here, okay? We're going to call that T. Okay, and the point of intersection to the EC, so from the point of intersection to the EC, that's also called T. They're the same distance. Okay, TC. So we have L, which stands for the length of the curve from the BC to the EC. We have the point of intersection, which is the point where these two tangents of the BC and EC intersect. And we have a distance from P, BC to PI, 
which is called T, and from EC to PI, which is also called T. Okay. Now, if we were to draw, I'll do this again nicely, if we were to draw a line on the inside of the curve that's perpendicular, that's perpendicular to the tangent, the EC tangent, and a line perpendicular to the BC. So perpendicular meaning this, this EC tangent forms a perpendicular angle to this line. And same thing over here, this is, this is 90 degrees. This, this point, this point here, creates an angle. And this angle is called the interior angle, or delta. Okay. Now, delta in in horizontal curves. When we talk about horizontal curves, delta um, is not the stadia intervals. Remember, stadia intervals for delta that's something totally different. Our delta here for horizontal curves just means the interior angle between these two lines. Okay. And where this this point this point right here is actually the center of this circle, of this dotted circle, okay? That means the distance from this point to the EC, or from this point to the BC, or from this point to any point along this curve or circle is the radius, okay? So R is radius. That's the distance from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle, okay? Um, oh, one more thing. Uh, these these tangents, okay, if the direction of travel on this curve is this way, um, this tangent is called the entry tangent, and this tangent is called the exiting tangent. Okay? So these are kind of the properties of some very very simple horizontal curves. Horizontal curves are just parts of a circle, okay? And we can draw tangents um, from where the curve starts and where the curve ends to find a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay? Couple definitions. Uh, remember BC is beginning of curve, EC is end of curve, PI is point of intersection. Okay? We can also define PC. PC which stands for point of curvature and that's simply the BC okay or the TC so the BC is the beginning of curve TC stands for tangent to curve really BC TC PC they're all the same thing they're all they mean is where the curve starts, the BC. Okay? PT, PT um, is the point of tangency. And that's the same thing as EC or CT. And CT stands for curve of tangency. And really, it's just it's just another way of saying the end of the curve. Uh, I like to be simple and just use BC, EC, and PI. Some problems may have these other other um, ways of saying, stating all these different points, so now you kind of know what these stand for. Um, I'll finish it off here. In the next video, we'll try to derive some equations to figure out um, different things on this curve.